Nintendo Switch Online got a surprise release at the last Nintendo Direct. Not only did they announce we would be getting Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games to the various tiers of the membership, but they launched right then and there the same day. Naturally, I dove right into Trek through them as many of the launch titles are some of my favorite games on the platforms. From Mario Land 2, Superstar Saga, and all the way to the Minish Cap. Now, because these two are very similar and part of the same family of systems, we're going to review the two emulators together. Here is my review of the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance apps for Nintendo Switch Online. First of all, let's talk about what you get for what tier of Nintendo Switch Online membership. They did this a fairly smart way of giving normal Switch Online subscribers something and more if you have the expansion pack. Regular members get the Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, while expansion pack members get the Game Boy Advance titles. I think this would be a decent way for them to do this. That way, everyone with some kind of membership gets something. Now let's really dive into the meat of these apps. Game roster and features. The first question is always, what games are we getting at launch? And we did get some pretty decent first party titles, though Pokemon fans will be left disappointed. Even though there are around 11 mainline Pokemon titles available across Game Boy Color and Advance, Generations 1 through 3 were not among the announced or upcoming lineups. We'll be getting the Game Boy Color Pokemon trading card game sometime, but no word on the main series. As far as what we did get, for Game Boy we got 9 games at launch with some of the highlights being Super Mario Land 2, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX, and Metroid 2. This isn't a bad roster, though it's curious that they would choose to offer us Mario Land 2 instead of 1, or both, and Link's Awakening DX with the Oracle games releasing at a later time, especially considering we already have a complete remake of Link's Awakening on the Switch proper. I'd consider this roster to be pretty okay. It has some nice games in it, and I do personally like that Mario Land 2 was given to us. I still have a worn down cartridge of that game, and it's something I've replayed dozens of times across my Game Boy, Color, and Advance SP, all consoles that I still own today. Game Boy Advance, however, I was much happier with. We only got six games, with the main highlights being the GBA remake of Super Mario 3, The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, and my favorite Mario RPG and probably one of my favorite and most replayed handheld RPGs in general, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. The latter is a really big deal for me as I've played and replayed my GBA cartridge of Superstar Saga time and time again. It's an extremely charming and fun little RPG, and I still hate that the official remake of Superstar Saga that launched at the end of the Switch's launch year was given to the 3DS instead of the Switch, or at least instead of a multi-platform release. Though I will admit that for right now, the Game Boy Advance library is really just Mario and Zelda. Four of the six titles are Mario games, and while the Minish Cap is arguably one of the better 2D Zelda games, a lot of the more interesting titles are upcoming and not here yet, like Metroid Fusion along with Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Next up are features, and this is a little interesting. Both of these emulators are like the Nintendo and Super Nintendo apps on features rather than like the Nintendo 64 one. We have the save state mechanic like all of the emulators have, but both Game Boy and Advance got the rewind feature giving you the ability to undo mistakes in platforming, or if you're like me, completely cheat the leveling system in Superstar Saga, guaranteeing yourself plus threes and plus fours on stat ups, and just rewinding again and again until you get the boost you want. We've also got interesting screen options. The Game Boy app lets you apply color filters to showcase how each game looked on the original Game Boy, the Game Boy Pocket, and the more vibrant look of the Game Boy Color. We've also got options for a smaller screen crop and reproduce classic feel, which blurs the filter to look like a Game Boy screen. While the Game Boy Advance emulator does not include filters for different models, we do still get the smaller screen option and blur or reproduce classic feel for those wanting a more vintage looking experience with that weird little pixel grid the Game Boy Advance had. Though, to be honest, this is strictly for nostalgia purposes. I think these games look a lot better without that filter. And now let's talk about how the games play and run. In essence, these are basic emulators that will showcase the games running as they did on original hardware. All of the old Game Boy games that had a lot of slowdown and clipping issues, like Mario Land 2, still have all of those issues. So Piranha Plants will still clip underneath the floor and all the crazy frame drops and lag that original game had, it still has. 
Game Boy Advance games, however, play really well. The fast-paced movement of games like Minish Cap and Superstar Saga is just as fast as it always was. The visuals of the GBA games do look a little jaggy here and there in TV mode, but for what it is, it's not bad at all. The main issue I found with the Advance emulator are some audio oddities. These are not all the same issue, but I found a lot of the sound effects in the Minish Cap would seem far too loud and almost distorted in both docked and handheld modes. This was mostly the sound effect when you get a new item. And some of the effects in Superstar Saga had balance issues as well, with some being significantly quieter than others. None of these are really game breaking, just something strange I've experienced with the emulator so far. And that's all I got for performance, so let's go into battery life, which is a lot. These emulators give the original model four to five hours, they give the light four to six, the V2 gets eight and a half to nine and a half, and the OLED gets nine to 10. Now, in conclusion, it was a surprise and treat to be told about and given Game Boy, Color, and Advance games all in one day. Now on the downside, there are some odd audio issues and all of the lag and slowdown these games had back in the day are still here. But with some of the launch titles being really good games and the addition of the Game Boy filters and rewind features make them emulators that aren't bad at all. Fingers crossed we can get updates soon for Amazing Mirror, Oracles of Ages and Seasons, and announcements for Pokemon Gens 1 through 3 with home compatibility in the near future. Reviews to go rates the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance emulators for Nintendo Switch Online a 7.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.